Okay, welcome back everyone to the session. Uh, let's uh, pick up from where we stopped. We talked about uh, the methods of working of Satan and we were discussing opposition. And under that, uh, one point that we missed out last time was about Paul's thorn in the flesh. And in that passage, we see that a demon is the uh, opposition. You know, and uh, this is a unique uh, situation simply because you know Paul was a man with great revelation, and uh, for to keep him humble, uh, this was not sorted out for him. Though he prayed about it, you know he continued to struggle with uh, the demon spirit. Uh, but then we cannot use this example in our lives today because it will not be applicable. Okay. Uh, we cannot compare with Paul's revelations. So that's how you know we would understand this particular passage. Now moving on to the next method of working, which is deception. Uh, what is deception? So we've understood temptation, opposition, intrusion, all that we could recognize. But what is deception? Yes, sure. Okay. Huh. Misusing somebody's trust. That that is one answer. Yes, Nikhil. Oh. Okay. Uh, he is uh, sharing a Hindi word for it. And correct. That that is correct. Huh. So trying cheating somebody. Cheating somebody. Betray. Okay. Cheating, betrayal all that okay so deception so we have an idea of what deception is and satan does that he deceives us um uh, why is it like a deception why is it like a betrayal or like a cheating because what he's saying is not the truth and it's bad if we believe the lies that satan tells us so deception is Making people believe a lie like it's a truth. Making people think of the truth like a lie. If, for example, you know, we, we read that bad company corrupts good character. There is a scripture like that. That is the truth of God's word. Now, if we are not careful about the, uh, you know, the close company we keep, the suggestions, the influence that comes from people. If we have good friends, great. You know, they will lead us in uh, good things, godly ways. But what if we have, uh, you know, people who are pushing us into addictions and pushing us into uh, ungodly ways? We will move towards destruction. But what is deception where Satan pushes us to believe that there's nothing wrong? What is wrong? The truth. Seems like the lie. No, nothing will happen to me. I will be fine. So you see there, there is a uh, sort of a non-acceptance of the truth. And the lie becomes a truth. Where the lie is, I'll be fine. But what does the word of God say? No, you cannot put your hands into you know, the wrong ungodly things and still be blessed. That's the truth of God's word. But Satan knows how to manipulate. So the truth, he will make it look like a lie. The lie, he will make it look like a truth. And when someone starts believing these things, they can come into a place. Satan is a deceiver. He will deceive. But we fall into deception. So we start believing these things. We believe the lies. Of the devil and uh, the Bible says that he is a corrupter of our minds you know there's and the Bible also says that there will be false teachings false apostles you know uh, so many wrong things that will go against the truth so there are many scriptures which have been given for us there where even uh, Jesus, he warned that there will be, you know, wrong uh, doctrines and teachings in the last days. In the book of Timothy, First Timothy chapter four, verse one, that also talks about, uh, you know, uh, deceptive. 
people coming in and uh, trying to corrupt our minds. Uh, 1 John chapter 4, verses 1 to 3, that also says there will be false leaders and we must discern the spirits. We cannot believe every spirit you know, that comes to uh, uh, tell us about God. So that discernment is required on our part to identify what is from God and what is not from God. You know, when we read about Satan, uh, one thing that the Bible says is he, uh, he can appear like the angel of light. See, when there is deception, right? Nobody will, nobody will try to deceive us in an obvious way. Okay, what, what do we mean by that? You know, Satan will not come uh, dressed with uh, two horns and one tail. And, you know, you look at Satan, you're like, hey, are you Satan? Yeah, you look like Satan. So obvious. And then Satan comes to you and says, hey, I'm here. I want to deceive you. And, uh, you know, this is what he will not come in a way that you can recognize. It'll be very subtle. Like you, we won't even feel that something is off. That's how he behaves. And the Bible actually says that he can come like the angel of light. So if he wants to deceive us, why would he reveal himself as, hey, I'm the bad person, I'm the deceiver? No. He'll come like an angel of light to show us the good things, give us a better life. And as we believe his lie and go against the truth of God's word, that's when we start slipping. Okay? So, he knows how to be deceptive in a very subtle way. And that's why we have to watch out. Everything, even you know, something that is taught, something uh, that is uh, preached, every spirit that is in the world, like the Bible says, be discerning. Try to figure out. Just because things sound good, it may not be rooted in the word. So when we are discerning, we can identify deception. So one of the ways for us to find out, you know, what is from God and what is not from God is to see the fruit. Okay. See the fruit means what is the result um, through the ministry or through what is done. Uh, you can see that people's lives are transformed. People are leaving sin. They are following God. Or you might see that, you know, uh, uh, many people are coming to know Christ or there is uh, a manifestation of the gifts of the Spirit. People are healed, people are delivered, people are strengthened, encouraged. So when we see this is the fruit, we can recognize that what is happening is from God. But if we don't see those things, let's say that you know Satan comes like the angel of light, gives some nice teaching, something deceptive. What is the result? People are falling away from God. There is no steadiness in their lives. There's a lot of confusion. You know, their family life is affected. Their health is affected. They are undergoing loss, strife, confusion in their relationships. So then you know, hey, this cannot be from God. If God is doing this work, how can the fruit be the opposite? Okay, so best is to identify deception. Even if it is very subtle, like immediately in your spirit, if you if because the Bible says that the Holy Spirit bears witness in our spirit. So sometimes we can tell something is wrong, you know, with, with this suggestion or what this person is saying, something is wrong. We can discern it immediately. Uh, and also the important thing is to know the Bible. When we know the word of God, people cannot deceive or Satan cannot deceive us so easily. Like Jesus, we can say, hey, it is written. It is written. No, I don't believe you. So that's how you know we have to discern uh, and overcome deception and stay on guard. Stay in the truth of God's word. Stay with the leading of the Holy Spirit. Now, there is one passage in 1 John chapter 2, verses 26 and 27, where it says that the anointing in you will teach you all things. The anointing in us. Anointing is another word used for Holy Spirit in this passage. So the Holy Spirit who is within us can help us identify what is a lie, what is a truth. Now, who is a minister of lie? 
who's a minister of truth. So all these things, all this discernment, we can know when the Holy Spirit is working in us. Okay? And obviously, we should know the word of God also. Okay, So that will help us. Oh. Huh. Yes. Thanks. Like, ma'am, you said, uh, like, watch out for fruits. Uh, yeah. This is, uh, we address this fruits uh, like uh, healing, uh, deliverance and all. But uh, then how, like, uh, also the scripture where Jesus tells, like, uh, at the end times when people come and they will tell, like, uh, we healed, we did these things in your name. And God tell like, we didn't, I didn't know you. Mm. So how this both goes, like if we are looking for the fruits, which are like healing, deliverance and all, and the, this both were like not uh, going hand in hand. Like, mm. okay. okay, so the way we'll understand this is when when he says, I, I don't know you, it simply means that they don't have a relationship with Jesus. Okay, so can people who don't have a relationship with Jesus do supernatural miracles? Answer is yes. There will be deceiving spirits. There will be, uh, you know, uh, the Bible says miracle workers. Those who do miracles. But they are not born again. That is the interpretation of that passage. A lot of people look at that passage and say that uh, uh, oh, it, it is talking about believers. But no. It's not talking about believers. When God says, I don't know you, it's like the John chapter 15, where, you know, the person, like you're not connected with God. Okay, as a believer, you're not born again. So then you're not a part of uh, Christ and his body. But I did miracles in your name. I prophesied. It's, it's just to say that they are doing miracles or supernatural works similar to what is seen in the kingdom. So why am I saying this? I'm saying this because, you remember, we said we should interpret unclear passages in the light of clear passages. So throughout, we see that uh, God is the one who is giving us the mandate to walk in the supernatural. Why would he tell a believer that, I don't know you? When we are in Christ, there is no reason for God to say, I don't know you. But what's happening here, the scenario is, people are moving in the supernatural, but they don't have a connection with God. No. Supernatural, yeah. And we know, right? It happens. We see so many uh, uh, people who are in the occult and all do some spiritual, supernatural things. But they are not part of the kingdom. Is that OK? OK. All right. Uh, any any other questions? Prince Mike. Uh, about the opposition, uh, uh, about the Paul uh, thorn in place, uh, you told like it's a demonic spirit. So is it like uh, he was a uh, demonized? Or he been tormented by demon? He was being tormented. Okay, not demonized, no. but being tormented. Yeah, demonized. Is, we we are going to that. We'll see why I'm I'm saying it's not demonized. So we've understood deception. Okay. So when a person uh, moves, accepts the lie of the devil, what will happen is they'll go deeper and deeper into deception. Uh, so you know. Um, how do I put this? Like they will begin to believe that the way they're living is correct, what they're doing is correct, you know. So at some point, it's very difficult to even speak with people who have gone that path. Uh, and they feel, yeah, nothing is wrong. But that's how Satan can deceive us if we are not careful. So the truth of God's word and the work of the spirit is very, very important. We have to go by that. Then only we'll be able to identify quickly and stop the deception.
okay yeah sure so uh, basically well, can we say that uh, as we like um, as we as we found the deception what yeah. really our uh, line uh, the the line that we draw in between right and wrong that becomes blurred eventually that's true yeah yeah that's true and it's uh, uh, really sad but that's also the problem of satan right he's fallen into deception where he first of all pride and then deception what is the deception i can become greater than god you know i will go higher i will sit on the throne so these kind of thoughts it's nowhere close to the reality of what god's word says so deceived we use terms like uh, he, he he what self deception where we ourselves you know brainwash ourselves to believe some lie okay so uh, we have to be careful about these things now moving on yeah another comment ha huh. uh ma'am uh, why didn't i mean satan was much closer than all of us he was uh, he was there but why didn't he never apologize to god and get that part why did he never apologize yeah, he had a better understanding than all of us he also knows the scriptures and everything but why he never thought of apologies <laughs> why didn't satan apologize i don't know him so closely <laughs> to know the answer but i can guess i can i mean from whatever we know i see this whole thing of pride and deception it's very dangerous so it it may cause us to come to a place where even though it's the right thing to apologize um when we i don't know if you if you re seen it or experienced it yourself when we are in pride no it doesn't even occur to us we feel like yeah i'm right why should i apologize you know so that pride and self deception has probably kept him in a place where he's not able to he couldn't even recognize that he needs to apologize so eventually his pride overpowered his sense yeah, of right and wrong that's the danger that's the danger so which is why when the holy spirit convicts us it may be something very small it's important to have a tender heart before god it it could be very small but we say god i'm so sorry you know i want to change help me change so when we are in that place and throughout our lives uh you're safe but when we come to a place where we say i know i already know what what are you going to tell me that is so dangerous because you kind of lose your sense of right and wrong from there yeah okay uh so deception we have an idea the next would be oppression oppression is if you noticed wrestling matches okay we've seen wrestling matches and in those matches usually the stronger person will overpower the weaker person so this subduing or taking over is what is known as oppression subduing is oppression so what does satan do he tries to take control okay and uh, when we we for whatever reason we are weak we don't deal with it we don't face the enemy right at the start he can subdue us okay this can happen in our mind uh, like for example fear from the beginning it can be something simple it just starts with oh i'm not good enough i'm not good enough i'm not good enough and then it gets worse but what is he doing mentally he's oppressing he's pushing me down okay and then what happens the oppression can even be seen in my physical health like maybe uh, slowly i i feel weak or i'm low immunity i'm frequently falling sick but it all has to do with fear so this is just one example i'm giving you so satan knows how to oppress people primarily in the mind so fear anxiety accusation uh anything else you know some kind of a deceptive thought uh so he intimidation so he'll use all this to oppress us and sometimes that oppression can also be physical 
you can see like sickness also is a an oppression because in acts chapter 10 verse 38 we read that um jesus of nazareth he went about doing good okay um healing all who were oppressed of the devil for god was with him so jesus came to set us free from the oppression of the devil so oppression is another way in which he can actually uh, you know influence people so the oppression can be on and off like we may we may experience the things that i shared just now you know they're coming in and going off but or they can be prolonged sometimes even a sickness or an incurable condition it can be an oppression of the devil and it can be broken by prayer so this is another way in which he operates so now coming to possession okay so till now uh, the way to actually understand is see possession is when uh, the human capacities or abilities i think i've told us earlier satan and demons take over the abilities of a person when it comes to that stage we say possession so uh, i'll just come to you Sean. so this possession can be sometimes there is an example in mark chapter 9 where uh, the you know a parent they bring their child for deliverance to jesus and they say something like whenever he sees water this demon spirit you know pushes him or something water or fire i don't remember clearly but this demon spirit pushes him there so only when this happens the demon spirit comes and starts tormenting but there is another account of um, the man in gathering where he was demon possessed that nobody could even go to him the whole time he was a sort of a dangerous figure okay over there so the demons can take over for some time on and off so we use the term manifestation so they manifest that they are there uh the whole time or sometimes so this is what possession is all other things the person has some mental control like you can overcome but possession is when that willpower that control has become very weak now that even uh the physical faculties and some of the abilities of the person the demons have started using it okay yeah sean you had something to say that uh, la mm. last class you talked about how if there's even like a crack in us believers that's uh, when that's what he uses in order to yeah. come and take us over or to influence us mm. so that that's what i want to add like so when we as we me yourself as believers have a particular fault in it that's what uh saying like targets that's what demons target and use that to their yes. limits yeah yeah that's true that's true and that's why um having our hearts healed emotional wholeness okay that is so important and for believers and we will study like as you do your courses when it comes to ministry right to minister from the place of being emotionally well okay and uh, to know how to manage our emotions over a period of time if even if something happens in our life experience how do we deal with it how do we quickly come to that place of wholeness and then minister from that place all that is so important otherwise what sean was saying you know, we leave uh, like you know bleeding parts of our heart and wounds and all that's very uh, easy for the enemy to come and take over and you know uh, mess things up for us so yeah it's true so all these uh, cracks or open doors in our lives uh, okay so we've understood possession right we've understood so we're talking about increasing levels oppression and then you know uh, possession now domination domination is to be able to have a great influence have a great influence and particularly we use this term uh, as influence over places like villages towns cities 
So demonic influence. And I've discussed you know, many things earlier with all of us. There is one uh, uh, example in the book of Revelation. Okay, Revelation chapter 2, verses 12 and 13. Uh, there is a mention of a city called Pergamos. Okay, Pergamos, where uh, it says that it was the throne of Satan. Or, in other words, Satan was dominating from that place. So can cities become strongholds of demonic powers? Yes, they can. So demonic powers were operating strongly from that city of Pergamos. So what's happening now? You know, there's a domination. They can accomplish a domination. So that can happen through which you know, they, they can affect many, many lives. Um, uh, and in the Bible, we have such examples of uh, maybe cities or, uh, uh, you know, here in our, in our uh, notes, there are examples of people who became channels for the domination of demons. So Babylon, many times Babylon is, you know, that, that term, it's a symbol. It's used as a symbol of uh, the demonic or ungodly. Um, so yeah, cities can have the domination. There are examples of people such as Jezebel. Okay, Jezebel in the in the Bible was a uh, she was a ruler, okay, a ruler, but uh, she encouraged a lot of witchcraft in her land. Uh, so that is why the term Jezebel through her. She became that channel that encouraged the ungodly, the demonic, you know, a lot of occultic practices during the rule of Jezebel. So uh, Satan can work through people also, certain individuals who are willing uh, and happy to increase the demonic activities. So Jezebel, uh, then Manasseh, a ruler in Jerusalem from 2 Chronicles 33 in uh, Samaria. In Acts chapter 8, there is a man called Simon, Simon the sorcerer. And uh, from what the Bible says, uh, he was called a god among the people in Samaria. So that shows us that he had a lot of supernatural power. Imagine, nobody will call uh, anybody a god. But if they're calling a man god, then he must have done some significant supernatural things. So can Satan work through individuals? Yes, he can work. He can try to show his power and all. And the sad part is these individuals have given the power to demo demons. Okay. Uh, there is one more girl in um, uh, Acts chapter 16. You know, she was a slave girl with the spirit of python it says she was doing fortune telling so what does uh, satan and demons do they can take over human beings see possession is they've taken over fine now this is domination domination where uh, through that person they're controlling the entire region the village so in philippi this girl the slave girl because of the way the demons were manifesting through her, it was affecting the, the people. So when Paul went, he cast out the demon, the whole city, right? Like in Philippi, people started becoming believers. Because this demon spirit, which was dominating through this one person, was now dealt with. You got it? Same thing happened in Samaria, that Simon became a believer. Okay? So uh, possession is... Demons are demons are manifesting through a person, but domination is they work in such a way that they can take control of a village, of a city, of a town, show miracles, so many things like that. Okay, so that's how it is. Now moving on to empowerment. Empowerment is when it's sort of uh, you know similar to domination, where a human being is gaining power through the demonic okay for example even simon the sorcerer as a sorcerer he would have done many things to get the powers which he got okay so uh, 
similarly people who are in uh, the occult what do they do we know right they do many things to gain that authority so that is empowerment where they are being empowered to keep doing the work of the devil and uh, people are deceived because people when they look at uh, such people they they see supernatural things taking place uh, and they say oh but he's a powerful man uh, she's a powerful woman all these miracles are taking place yes they are taking place but that's because the person has gone beyond the level of you know just possession and the demon powers now are giving their powers to this person to uh, you know to continue to deceive people so that's how it works so the occult there are many false religions uh, in uh, first timothy 4 I, I said right in the last days there will be uh, paul wrote to timothy people false teachers and, and they they will teach all kinds of stuff and satan will show his power also through some of these teachings and philosophies but those who don't have the understanding of the word those who are blinded to the truth of the gospel they start believing all these false religions okay so that's how it is light signs and miracles the bible talks about that so we have to be careful uh, but here is the uh, truth that we must be grounded in that even if satan can manifest his power it is nothing compared to the power of god i think i've shared that right moses um, he also went there were sorcerers in Egypt, but who overcame? Moses overcame. So Elijah and the worshippers of Baal, who was the one who brought down fire? Elijah. So yes, there will be some demonstration of power, but God is greater, way greater than Satan and his power. Okay? So we should not be intimidated. But this is the progression so any thoughts any questions regarding what we have discussed so far okay maybe i'll just share um something actually not so connected but when we read about uh, domination and empowerment and all, sometimes when there is the unknown, we feel more interested, like, oh, what is that? And how does all these, all these things work? So I just want to encourage and at the same time, um, you know, sort of warn us not to get too deep into these things. We understand that Satan can empower and dominate and do all these things. But getting deep into it because sometimes what believers do they develop a very unhealthy interest that oh they have this practice they have that practice this is how the spirit speaks that is how the spirit does you know they get deep into it and sometimes i mean i myself i have encountered some books where i felt like it's so unnecessary to go so deep into uh, the things that people who don't believe in god do uh, so for us actually speaking we are going in depth for all this uh, simply because you know you're you're in bible college and you want to understand the workings of the devil but more than anything for believers authority and the deliverance the subject that we must focus on is the cross the victory of the cross you get it so keep the focus there and don't uh, you know get misguided too much into these details it's just a note yeah sure uh, Ma'am, during our lifestyle evangelism class, mm -hmm. Pastor Paul was talking about like when we want to talk to a believer, uh, the, uh, unbeliever, sorry, mm -hmm. um, who was like a suppose a Hindu or a Muslim and all that. Yeah. It's best like uh, we should learn a bit about their religion so that we can find the similarities between that. Yeah. So like the same thing said about not getting too deep into the subject of demonology. Yeah. Can you apply the same thing here? Because we are studying the relig religion of another person, but we shouldn't get so deep into it. That, yeah. Uh, so just key concepts, no, Sean, I think probably that's what Pastor Paul was referring to. For example, see, if you look at uh, a certain religion, you could say that, I mean, I'm not 
uh, stating names of religions here, but you could say that salvation is attained this in this way. Or they don't understand the concept of the Trinity. They don't understand the concept of the Son. So if you know key things, that's more than enough to actually have a conversation. You don't have to go so deep. Heavenly Father, thank you very much for guiding us earlier for this class. Heavenly Father, thank you for leading us mightily, Heavenly Father. Heavenly Father, thank you very much for giving us new understanding, Heavenly Father, as uh, to how to defend ourselves, how to better ourselves, Heavenly Father. Thank you very much, Heavenly Father. Please help us to understand more, Heavenly Father, and please help us to be well prepared, Heavenly Father. And uh, thank you very much for using my mightily to teach us all the new things, Heavenly Father. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Thank you. Thank you, everyone. Um, I'll see you again on Friday in the next class. God bless.